Well, folks, today it's a battle royale. We are going to discern which film franchise is, in fact, the greatest of all film franchises. Here's how we're going to do this. <laughs> film franchises and one TV show have been broken down oh, into four brackets by producer Zach, who's very into this sort of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to choose one from each of these brackets. Then, when we get That's to our final four, we're going to there. actually use a set of scoring criteria to determine which film franchise is the best. Those criteria include entertainment value, story, characters and acting, world building, technical aspects like visual effects and cinematography, and the X factor. Like, is it ahead of its time? Was it groundbreaking? That sort of thing. Technical All right, let's aspects. jump right in. So. Okay. Here we have four brackets. We have the sci-fi bracket, the action like bracket, right the fancy right bracket, and the adventure bracket. So we'll begin with the sci-fi bracket. First in the sci-fi bracket is Dune. Now, it's kind of hard to put Dune at the top of the sci-fi heap considering one movie has come out. So maybe Dune 2 sucks. And now there's going to be Dune 3. So you're not even considering the uh, the old school Dune? <laughs> no, David Lynch Dune doesn't count. That's, not, that's not a real thing. Really bad. Really, really not good. So, yeah, old school Dune, no good. New school Dune is one movie. So, not Dune. Okay, fine. Next, Star Wars. So, I'm going to save my analysis for Star Wars because, obviously, I'm a huge Star Wars nerd. Like, I was having a lightsaber fight with two of my children last night. So, huge Star Wars nerd. And it's got its hits and it's got its misses. But it is, I mean, spoiler alert. Well, we'll come back to it. Okay. <laughs> Alien Predator. A um, terrible job so this bit. Alien is great and Aliens is great and all of the rest kind of and, and the original Predator is good. All the rest suck. All the rest are terrible. So, AVP Requiem. Right? Yeah. No. <laughs> no. 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 So, Alien versus Predator. What's kind of fascinating is how these two series sort of met in the middle because the original Alien is like very high concept sci-fi. They actually move super slow, and then Aliens is sort of a complete recasting of the whole thing with Sigourney Weaver, and those are both kind of like A-list movies, and Predator is really a B movie. <laughs> so the fact that those crossed streams and became one series is sort of weird. Yeah, again, they, enjoyable. Is it like the greatest sci-fi series of all time? No, 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 no. Okay. Star Predator's Trek. a masterpiece, so sir. I'm I sorry. assume that we are yeah, including actually, in both let's, the Star let's Wars universe this. and the Star Trek universe. All of I, I was on the verge of asking you to pause, and it's like, that is... This actually, when I originally watched the first 10 minutes on Saturday, <laughs> it's actually really pissed me off because in, um, like, especially given some of the movies he's about to praise, like Predator, the original Predator, right. like, that is, like, the platonic ideal of an action horror movie. Hell like, that, yeah. That, that thing is perfect. Hell yeah. So that this is, uh, yeah. and, you know, spoiler uh, and like in a minute, he's going to like praise the fucking board identity like way too much, and it's like this is like you're gonna you're gonna say that, and you're gonna be like ah I don't know Predator, it's okay. Yeah, and then there's Prey. Like like Prey is a fucking great movie. It's it's uh you know is Predator a better film? Yes. Is Prey a great sequel that that kind of builds upon the lore and, and does something slightly different with it? You know, different enough. And it's like, yeah, yeah, it's it's what you want in a in a good sequel. And uh, you know, he it, just it flips it on that. its end in, in, in a dissimilar way that, that aliens does to alien, but it does in such a way that, that makes you forget about all of these horrendous sequels that should not have been made and should have been banished immediately to uh, you know the, the forbidden zone, negative zone, any zone, all the zones, zone of interest, yeah. sure, just banish it. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but I think that you know, like it, it's I feel like this idiot, like Predator, like seems right up his alley. He's like, he's gonna shit on Predator. Oh yeah, yeah. It's, no la it's no lady ballers. Well, there's Get the two fuck black people here. in it, so he's pissed off about that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 but but I mean seriously, like this is, I mean it's such a perfectly put together movie. I mean it's like this. Yeah, no, it does the thing. Yeah, I mean there's no there's no slack in it. You know, I mean it's like yeah. look, it has some epically goofy lines of dialogue. Although that it's also a big part of the charm. Of, uh, of, get to of the Predator. chopper you know? yes. <laughs> exactly you're, you're mad at that. Yeah, exactly. but it's like I can somehow it manages to be both a perfect like military action movie and a perfect slasher movie like yeah. you know come on man they gotta gotta put a little bit more respect on predator than that but let's let's keep going yeah he if he's getting to the star trek part so he's maybe about to really upset me yeah. let's see there's gonna be some real i don't give a fuck about predator. dog crap I've opinions happening it. 
Oh, you should watch Predator. Full, okay, full universe. Will. Yeah, full universe. Make it so. The biggest problem with the Star Trek series is that the movies are just not very good. Is Star Trek II, Wrath of Khan is fantastic. And Star Trek III, Search for Spock, is also pretty good. Genesis! I even am like one of the few people who's okay with Star Trek IV and Star Trek you? V. Like, I'm people. Okay with those few people! But as a film franchise, does it hold up the same way like the original Star Wars trilogy does? Not even remotely close. Uh, in terms of the TV shows, the truth is the original Star Trek series is not that great. Like, it's classic TV, but it's not like if you, if you flip past it on a channel, you wouldn't be like, this is an amazing series. It's not like the original Twilight Zone or something. And Star Trek Next Generation, I just never really got into it. So I know it's that a lot well, of Trekkies out there, to me, the answer here is no on Star Trek. Is okay. Like a for All the right. times right. thing? Let's like, was it. it a big deal for the pause times? It. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What a shocker! First of all, that he doesn't like uh, the the space, the full out, fully automated space utopia. He doesn't like that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, look. I, I mean, that that comparison at the end is very strange too, because it's I like, know. look, I I mean, I'm not hated here. I actually love the original Twilight Zone, but uh, but it's like, pretty inconsistent though. Like, it is I mean, wildly inconsistent. I mean, there there are like you watch several episodes in a row in the order in which they're originally aired. And, you know, I think if we're being real about this, they're more clunkers than not. Right? It's like, like one out of five, maybe. And one of those fives are like, oh, my God, this is the best thing I've ever seen. But then there's like two that you're like, wow, that happened. And then like three, like, whoa, that's not great. And I know this because I've watched the Twilight Zone marathons that they, they air on these various TV channels multiple times over. And I'm like, wow, so many misses. I guess I get it, but it's like, yeah, like, you know, I, I've watched, I've spent enough time watching Twilight Zone and I've spent enough time watching the original Star Trek. Be like, honestly, the hit rate is better in the original Star Trek like um, than it is in the Twilight Zone. And then he yeah. lays into the movies, right? And he says four is bad. Yeah, I'm he's sorry. Like, he's like, oh, I'm one of the few people who kind of like four. It's like, what, what the fuck are you talking about? Four who was are you great. talking to? But four like, is like, 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 like Non Star Trek people enjoy four. Word, yes, yeah. You know, like, I mean, like I, I Star Trek I, Six is like a you know beloved only to Star Trek fans, and it's a great film. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that line in the scene right there. Star Trek Six is one of the best. Is um, that the but, one they go uh, find God in the middle of the universe? No, that no, that's five. five. That's five. Okay. No, six? Uh, that, uh, six was the final one where they kind of um, yeah, yeah, six, uh, they assassinate six, the uh, president and six and, uh, is like a very on. six is such a thinly disguised metaphor for the end of the Cold War. Okay. That I yeah. was surprised that Putin did bring it up to Tucker Carlson as part of his <laughs> exhaustive narration yes. of everything that never there happened. Is a, there is an American movie. No, it's called this. I, here's the thing. I know I've seen it, but I've retained none of the information. So clearly yeah. it made a huge impression on me. I, I mean, yeah. I it, it actually did make a huge impression on me. I mean, I... Um, That's Christopher Plummer? That's the one with... Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, that was like... I will also say, what, what what year did six come out? Uh, two thousand. Like, no, uh, ninety two. No, no. Ninety two. Yeah, ninety two yeah. sounds more like it, right? So because it's like, like a little earlier. Let me see. Yeah, I feel. Um, ninety one. Ninety one. Ninety one. Okay. That sounds even more like it. Yeah, because like yeah, that's like one of the first movies I remember going to see on my own, and I loved the shit out of Star <laughs> Trek Six. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I was that movie made me so happy, you know, when I watched it. Right, right, right. Uh, you know that. Um, oh yeah, because it's kind of like what if the wall came down, but in space, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I think it's pretty yeah, good, okay. right? That's where, yeah, 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 he's I like, right now. Yeah. He's like a Christopher Plummer is like an in between Eric Klingon, right? Where he's not full that's war Klingon, that's right? But he's yeah. like, yeah, and there's those and tense he's scenes. Got the at eye the patch table. and Coach Shakespeare. Yeah. Oh shit. Yeah, that's 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 good stuff. Yeah. And, and then, and then to top stuff, it off, you have stuff. that that amazing scene where um Kirk kisses himself and then it reveals to be David Bowie's wife. <laughs> well, I, and there no. the uh the guy who I, plays Odo you lost me there, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just we'll, 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 we'll unpack that off air. Uh, Andy, so, Andy, Andy made that up. <laughs> Andy dripped that last night. No. The guy who plays Odo is the uh, would be assassin. We should keep going, but yes, it is worth registering that like we're not that far in, and we also we already have like yeah, it's already like look, I I could write a I could do a blog centered around how wrong he is on literally everything. Uh, yeah, just in that last sentence, but certainly Predator and, and Star Trek are Come like on. two very shitty takes right off. Predator the seems like dude, that's right. It, it's right wing catnip. 
Nice. Yeah. And I love it Not in sure. spite of that. But like, Not how sure. would this idiot miss? Like, whatever. Just move on. Yeah. Okay. On, but at least his Botox. Yeah, Rene Abergenard. Have you say his last name? It's a, it's, Fr- it's French, bitch. Thank you. <laughs> ben, Sh- ben Shapiro's four headlines are fighting for their lives <laughs> right now with <laughs> fucking Botox. It's a heated right, battle. Yeah. <laughs> it, it had a couple moments that were a big deal for the times, but it, it's really cheesy. Like the original Star Trek is incredibly cheesy. It's basically Captain Kirk runs around the galaxy impregnating strange alien women. Oh, fun. Um, it has its moments. It has its moments. Hunter Biden in space. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? What's happening? William Chatner. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, Blade Runner. Blade Runner is, again... It's, it's always a sign of a good impression when you say the name of the guy that you're doing. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, just, you, this is the guy I'm doing the impression of. Check it out. Yeah, exactly. yeah, yeah. George, that's why George I say, W. Bush, you know, know George <laughs> Spock. <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> Weird to call this a film franchise because there are two movies, right? There's original Blade Runner and the much better Blade Runner 2049. What? All right, all right. Three times in a vain attempt to find what people. Oh, this, this fucking guy. This is actually maybe the worst take so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Because like, like the original Blade Runner, classic for a reason. Great movie. Blade Runner twenty forty nine. It visually, it's great. It's yeah. it's it's nice to look at. You cannot think too hard about the story. Like, uh, yeah, it, it, you know, the the original Blade Runner is like boxes within boxes that you're constantly unpacking and. And thinking about and meditating on and, and there's just so much there that 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 it works in those those levels and uh 2049 is just a pastiche of uh what blade runner was and it's 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 uh fairly i mean it's a great film like like as a movie but it is it compared to the original blade runner it is empty yeah, yeah I, mean, I don't even think it's a great film i mean i think it's like i think it's great cinematography uh but like it it, it doesn't oh, i think it's pretty good Okay, I don't really think the story makes sense. I think that, like, on a thematic level, none of it quite works. You can, you know, like, it seems like they're going for a bunch of things at the same time that don't quite, um, that don't, that don't quite gel. It's, it's, I mean, I think it's, it's too. Jared con- Leto was like one of the big downsides to it. Yeah, Jer- I mean, Jer- as he is normally. Can I just say that 2049, the problem with 2049 for me is that the, the B plot, the, the plot with Joy is, is much more interesting than the A plot, which is, which is the actual sequel part of it. And I I like it just fine, but I hate that it comes up in the same sentence as the masterpiece, which is the Ridley Scott Blade Runner, which we did for my birthday uh, for Movie Night Automata because it is one of my favorite movies of all time. If you like cyberpunk, it doesn't exist without Blade Runner. And it's right. one of the only things I can think of. The, the movie is better than the book. And I say that as a Philip K. Dick super fan, that do Android oh. from Electric Sheep is amazing. Blade Runner's better. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I like... I like Dreadnought's Jubilee Electric Sheep. I think it's like really cool for what it is. But also, as somebody who's also a big Philip K. Dick fan, uh, it's a problem because so many people, when they're like, oh, shit, I'll read a Philip K. Dick book, yeah. uh, you know, will pick up Dreadnought's Dream of Electric Sheep because they saw Blade Runner and they liked it. And then they they're like, Mercerism? What is this all about? <laughs> what, is, what the what fuck is this? this? <laughs> right. You know, it's like it's right. basically what they get out of it is this, this, this weird thing that has very little in common with Blade Runner, which is correct. Right. right? <laughs> but, uh, uh, and it's know. not, and, and, and those aspects that are taken out are, they're not cinematic. So they're taken out yeah. for good reason. And it's, it's one of the, it's, yeah. Blade and, and, Runner and is one totally of the good different. arguments. Totally for, different. For, for Ridley Scott as a great director. It's one of the few. I would say that Thelma and Louise and uh, um, uh, Alien, a- Alien. Yeah, Th- those are the three. Like, all right, he's great. <laughs> yeah, he's made a lot of. He also made Legend. Enough said. <laughs> Love about this movie. Quite an experience to live in fear, isn't it? I'm assuming you watched all the different endings as well. Yeah, I did. I watched all the different endings. It's just, it, it's not my thing. I don't, the original Blade Runner just does not do it for me. And that's despite the fact that there are some Ridley Scott movies that I really like. And I really like Harrison Ford. It's just me. I liked 2049 way better. I thought 2049 was actually quite good. It actually expanded on a lot of things in a really interesting way. I totally agree. I, I really like, I really like 2049. I think it's a much better movie than the original Blade Runner. But that said, is it like top film franchise? No. That's simpleton speak, by okay. the way. Terminator. So you know. There's one big problem with the Terminator franchise, and that is there's only one good movie, and it's Terminator 2. Hi, Mark Barton. Oh, for fuck's sake. 
when the gunman Term original Terminator's fine. It's fine. It's a that come on, man. Like Terminator, the the original Terminator is a thing of beauty. Yeah, it's it's uh, good. It's so good. It's like yeah. it's it's the uh, it's like a, the fact that I mean, yeah. I mean, you were you were talking about Cyberpunk a minute ago, like the yeah. way that they do, like the. Uh, uh, you know that the uh, even like the the nightclub uh, that Sarakata goes to hang out Classic. as like yes you know, tech, tech noir tech noir <laughs> right? genre defining nightclub yeah <laughs> uh, like and it's it's such a it's such a tightly constructed movie it's yeah. it's like you know kind of a western in a weird way it's like it's it, the fact that it's like I mean I I'm a huge sucker for uh, for for like internally consistent fatalistic time travel and it's like that's that's like the certainly probably the best version of that that's that's ever been done in a big hollywood movie christopher nolan wishes he could make this movie <laughs> yeah no exactly it's like it you know and i'm not saying to this to like you know i certainly don't want to shit on terminator 2 which is like which which is like a is great it's a classic action movie but like um but you know, but but the fact that he's like, yeah, 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 Terminator One's fine, whatever. I guess it's not that great. It's like that. That's just that. That to me is somebody who like is not really capable of appreciating very much about these movies, right? Well, and Cameron Cameron himself, because Terminator and Terminator Two are both fantastic in different movies, where the yes. one kind of does a different thing than the other one, and unfortunately, they kept trying after that. <laughs> Is what yeah, I'm yeah. I mean, I, I really was cheering for Gynesis. I believe that's how it's pronounced, the way it's spelled. Um, but but uh, no, Ter Terminator Genesis, I, I was really cheering for because uh, I thought the concept was kind of cool where, where it's like, oh, no, they're, um, uh, you know, they, 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 they're, they're, they're like going through the different timelines and stuff like that. Oh, this is this is kind of weird, but cool. The, the best Terminator spinoff material is been the dark horse comics uh by, by a pretty large margin and yes. they they keep trying and it's like yeah that's pretty good but the thing is term the terminator as it is known and terminator 2 judgment day again that is to me alien aliens which is both movies do something fantastic and then they they manage to double down on what made the first one in the first good in the first place and then do something new as well uh it's impossible it's impossible to understate the special effects in Terminator 2, what Cameron did, and this is coming from someone that, like, don't talk to me about Avatar. I don't want to, don't, don't bring that word up to me. Like, that, that's a, a verboten word, right? But what we think of, better or for worse, for, for CGI, uh, it, the, th the through line goes straight to uh, Terminator 2 Judgment Day. And, by the way, both kind of a, uh, a cab <laughs> as well. Some, some real good all, all cops are bastards material. And probably probably another reason why he doesn't like it probably <laughs> exactly anyway uh I'm, I'm getting into the movie franchise beyond those two fraught to put a blow yeah I, I mean i don't i don't think there are any good movies after terminator 2 certainly and i correct you know i i, I uh, they have moments. Yeah. I, I mean, I'll give them that. Like uh, the yeah. third one, uh, that that ending where where they just end with the uh, the nuclear bombs going off. Yeah. Like, you know. Yeah, hey, but overall, the third movie is like that. not we, something that goes in the same conversation as you know certainly the other two. We'll uh, call them inessential and pretend that they don't happen. We, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm a uh, you know I'm kind of an apologist for the uh, the TV show, but that that's really the only. You thing know I what think. the TV show? Watch that during COVID. I was like, why didn't anybody tell me this was good? Like it this was is a, good, it's right? a good TV show. Yeah, yeah. I, I know. I uh, you had Shirley Manson as a T1000. Okay, <laughs> great. I'm in. Oh, the urinal <laughs> scene. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> fantastic, yeah, super good. No, no, I was I was a fan of the TV show, but. Um, but fair enough. There are much worse takes coming up. So let's. let's uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. This is going to be like a seven hour show if we keep at it like this. My bad. But. B movie. Terminator 2 is legitimately maybe the best action flick ever. It's what does he mean by B Terminator movie? 2 is just great. And then everything else since then is sucked. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, like literally all of them have been bad. The one with Christian Bale. And then you've got the one with uh, what, what was her name? Christian Loken or whatever her name was. Can't remember the blonde the female Terminator. Oh, the Terminatrix. Yeah, exactly. That was so stupid. First of all, Sarah Connor. <laughs> That's is the like scene. The That's the scene that includes sure. female action star 
in any of these movies. Sarah Connor. Sarah Connor is great. And what, the thing about Sarah Connor is, Weaver, is Ripley? she's no? a female okay. who has to take up a traditionally male thing. And because of that, she's forced into a position where she can't win. Like the, the amazing thing about Terminator 2 is that she is a super kick-ass lady. And also, like, if she gets in a fight with a dude, she's not beating up the dude. Like, it's actually quite realistic about what a woman would do in a fight with a much larger human being and what her skills would be and what she would cultivate. Like, Terminator 2 is great, and the rest of the series, meh. Uh, Planet of the Apes, first movie is great. All the rest, meh. I had a cousin who loved the Planet of the Apes series. First Planet of the Apes is a terrific film. The twist ending on Planet of the Apes, like the original, if you don't know what's coming, is wild. Okay, so, as you can see, that leaves our friends here. Okay, can you pause that for a second? Okay, next. Because, okay, I, I don't disagree that the of the original Planet of the Apes series, I do think the only timeless movie is the first one. But we have to give it up for one of the bleakest Indians of all time on Escape, which which is the bomb goes off. And yeah. that's how Charles did. I, never, I don't have to come back to this series because the, the bomb went off and everybody died. I, I, and, like, I think it's weird that Planet of the Apes is not something I hear a lot of right-wing discourse about at all because I, I feel like it, it's abjectly political uh, in a lot of – it's French. It's very it's French. Woke. It is indeed. <laughs> they made apes woke. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that actually surprises me. That like that that um, and I could get into more, ones. but it, 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 like whatever. This this is not it, a, like the new ones are like really good. I so the Burton one is dog shit. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I'm talking about peace that. and love in my heart. <laughs> but like the actual new ones, uh, really good. I was skeptical, and the Andy Circus ones. Very good. Not Andy Circus, as in Andy is a circus performer, but S E R K I S. Uh, they're actually good. Okay, sorry. I, I, I wanted to get that out of there because you you got to give it up for. Ah, is this is the one? Is that other one like great? I don't know. It's got one of the most jacked up endings this side of the mist. <laughs> you know, you got to give it up for that. Yeah, you got to give it up. All right, let's go. to the action category. Okay, so it's super weird to put The Godfather in the action category. I didn't know where to put it. Yeah, this is the biggest problem. There's no great place to put The, the Godfather category because it's a drama. Exactly, mm -hmm. I didn't, there was no like franchises that were dramas that were like tons of them. It's true, it's true. There is not, there is not really like a series of, of drama franchises that, that exist. There's that one with Ethan Hawke like before sunset or like they, like they, there are a few of them but they're very few and far between i put it in there because there's guns in it that's pretty much the only so here's where i'm gonna have my hardest battle because it's clearly the best of these series right everything in this category is way worse than the godfather but is the godfather an action series i'm gonna say yes just because it's more fun if i say yes you should separate it put in its own thing it makes it into the final five okay that's fine i'm going to create this is terrible production it's having a production meeting okay on here. so <laughs> That's going to go there. Like, okay. The other, <laughs> okay. In the, the other ones, the the Jason Bourne series, original Jason Bourne is great. Like the original Jason Bourne film is one of the best action flicks of all time. Um, I'm not sure that the other Bourne. I think two is also really good. I like the first three, honestly. Yeah, actually, the, the eh, that's a fair argument. The first three are very good. And then they went off script and got a new character. Yeah, then we got Jeremy, Jeremy yeah. Renner, and it kind okay. of like went sideways and all that. But the first three are really terrific. Also, really great score, actually. We we don't have to do a big pause. Larry here. David jump scare, by the way. I just no. I just really <laughs> my I favorite part really of the board want series to note here that like he met he met uh, both um, the original Predator, the original right. Terminator, yeah. um, you know, multiple you know pretty good Star Star Trek movies. But it's like, oh yeah, all three of the first, you know, board movies are Jason terrible. Bourne. That's the one. That, yeah, that's his. That's he, he his did brand. That one out right. too. And, and like, like I just watched, uh, you know, rewatched, and I finally saw Jason Bourne, which which it took me till like uh, end yeah. of last year to actually see it. But but uh, like like the first Bourne movie is enjoyable. I'm I'm, I'm gonna I saw give it in the that. theater. Like that was yeah, good. no, I, 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 I saw it at the theater. Uh, I, 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 yeah, I was uh, I was just thinking. I think it was the second film. I was probably like ten when I saw it which is what you were talking about uh, 
Star Trek Six was it Ben? One of the movies. Yeah. Movie yeah, yeah. But like that, yeah. The there's a, there was a run of movies that came out between like 2000 and 2002 that I thought were just like the greatest fucking as Pirates <laughs> Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. Triple X, Triple X with uh, Vin Diesel sure. and Born Identity. When this speaking, robbed of jump, at the Oscars. Speak, yeah. Speaking, <laughs> speaking of jump scares, Moby jump scare, but went extreme ways when uh when that song when the, when the song drops and he's like like I'm just bored or whatever he says like yeah it's a uh, hundred percent nostalgia though but that is yeah I, I I will give the uh, second one which is definitely an inferior film to the first one um. Uh, that's, credit that's the for, for the me. cinematography, like like the the way they use shaky yeah. cam in there. Oh, because it switched. Was, that was it switched to green grass from uh, yeah. Doug Lyman. Yeah, which because yeah, yeah, yeah. was this all every everyone following uh, Danny Boyle and Twenty Eight Days Later. Everybody was doing shaky. But, cam but I, I will <laughs> say uh, the strength of that uh, that uh, you know kind of popularized it. But 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 the strength of watching uh, green grass do it is like he sets the scene really well, so like you know the space. Yeah. So when you have all the cuts, the shaky cam, you can kind of follow the action. I don't think I don't love it. I don't love it. Yeah, but, shame like, about I the script. Say, like, but other than that, know. it's great. Yeah, uh, I've but seen yeah. the vast majority of these movies. If you if you put a gun to my head and said pick out a major plot point, couldn't tell you. Yeah, I, I mean, I look. I it's watched, fine. It's Velveeta, man. It's it's, it's watched, action Velveeta. I, I yeah, exactly. Like I watched the board identity in the theater. I enjoyed myself. I didn't want my money back. It was like a perfectly like fine way to spend an evening. But like the idea <laughs> that yeah. that movie is like the thing that you say very good after you. I, and by the way, when he says B movie, I think I think he I think he thinks that means a movie he would give like a grade of a B to. Because <laughs> that's yeah, the maybe only- there was a B in it. That's the only right. way I could make sense of his usage. It's that born. It's born starts with a B. It's a B movie. Because because he, he was like it's categorized in B on know, his shelf. But he did not call born a B movie. He only he said that uh, Predator was a B movie. He said the first yeah. Terminator was a B movie. It's like, well, hold on. How are you using the term B movie? Yeah. If like Terminator is one, but Terminator Two is it right? Like like what's I, I you know like again? It just seems like to him that's a term for like he doesn't think it's that great. But um, maybe he's talking about the actual B movie with uh, Jerry Seinfeld. <laughs> yeah. and he Remember just that? Thinks that? He Real just thing. thinks that was Sadly. literally the same movie as The Terminator. Yeah, yeah. I, I get this uh, confused all the time. Yeah, no, that easy mistake to make. Uh, but yeah, yeah he, like all these, all of these like great, like genuinely classic, uh, you know, action movies that that he's dismissing. And then, like, oh yeah, the board identity was very good. And so were the second one and the third one. That's like that. I do not understand the standards. What a simpleton, most annoying guy at the office take. Seriously, yeah. like, I mean, uh, come on. It, it's so nice that he's using the same intellectual rigor of po- politics that he's taking to movies, and. Right, uh, right you know, flailing around just as it's badly. A, it's a fascinating video. He's like, yeah, I think the first two were good. Then his producer's like, what about the first three? He's like, yeah, you could make an argument. And then and then they're moving on to the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> I guess we're not actually going to have that argument. We're just going to, yeah. we're just going to note that that could be made, but yeah. yeah, let's keep going. Okay. So have not made up mine. James Bond. So I am wearing like an actual, the James Bond watch from the last movie. Rolex. Amiga. Beautiful. With that said, there's so many bad James Bond movies. Like so many of them. Like I'm I'm not a fan of the original James Bond films. I just don't think they're very good. And then the Pierce Brosnan films are also not very good. I one more syllable and I'll have you killed. I'm a big fan of the relaunch Casino Royale. And I'm pretty good with Skyfall, but those are the only two in the series that I really, really love. They're not all connected, right? Uh no. They're, they're all they're... Compl- So she doesn't know anything about movies. No. Yeah. <laughs> or, or or neither does Shapiro. Well, but I mean, she knows less than it. No, no, like like Shapiro knows. Like Shapiro has seen all these movies. He just has dumb opinions about them. (laughs) Uh, She seems like Sean Connery is going to come back from the grave to bitch slap him. Is what he's going to do. I'm going to make you like a woman and hit you. She 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 seems like she might not have ever seen a movie. She is like me trying to follow Cuba on the fucking history of the Donbass or whatever. I'm like, like, so what? So what is this? Is this all connected, or is this just? 
<laughs> so Casino Royale's fine. There's more ball torture than I would like in a Bond movie. In that True. Movie. Sure. That's, That's from the point. book, though. So, you know, get, <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah. Heavy in the ball I torture. Have, I do have People thoughts forget. about this, but I, I just want to say, like, the fact that she doesn't understand how the Bond movies work, the fact that right. she doesn't seem to know what the basic premise of Star Trek is. It's like, <laughs> did this woman just come out of, like, did you recruit her to the Daily Wire from, like, one of those... Uh, like Mormon polygamous compounds where oh, like right. everybody is like the sheltered from media. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I, that that's amazing. Well, but yeah, I think, well, I think that also kind of shows the cross cultural, like the type of person who might work on a right wing television yeah, show yeah. talking or YouTube show talking about media. Like it's very unlikely we would recruit someone for our like leftist show. That's like, yeah, I don't like. Are the James Bond films connected? Yeah, like, and, th and that's your moment to shine. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, I, am, am I the only person that's read the James Bond books? By the uh, way, I read like three or four of them. I the think. The books. I Is mean, it worth it? Uh, yeah, it's I, fine. I, it's... I mean, I, I enjoy those books. Like they're they're not great literature, but I enjoy them. Like it's. Uh, I did read Casino Royale. Yeah. Uh, I read Dr. No. I think I read uh, the Moon. Uh, uh, Jesus Christ, what's the Moonraker? Moonraker. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, I read a uh, long time ago. I just randomly, like a really long time ago, like I think this was on cassette tapes on a car trip. I listened to the audiobook of the um, the of uh, You Only Die Twice. Uh, oh, sure, sure, yeah, sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so they're not bad. They're of their sure. time. I did was introduced to the concept of death by misadventure by one of the Ian Fleming James Bond books, which I must say is, is a concept that I was I was very glad to learn about. Uh, and they're they're just as sexist and kind of disposable, really. And I say that like I like a lot of those movies. Yeah, uh, and I don't I, like a lot of them too. And it's fine. Yeah. I don't care. How many are there? I don't know. I don't care. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they are mostly kind of disposable. Casino yeah. Royale is the only one with like an actual character arc right. uh, to yes. it. Uh, I, I love Golden Eye. Like Golden Eye is probably my second the, favorite. I love the Golden Eye video game, but the, but I, the, the I movie's pretty good too. Joke, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I, yeah. It's like a lifestyle choice more than a joke. I mean, geez. <laughs> <laughs> Spent a lot of time in that game. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Uh, not, not just me. All right, good. Yeah. Uh, so, so like, but but I I really feel like what's getting lost in all of this is how fucking stupid uh, Ben Shapiro's take on the James Bond movies is. Yeah, because because right. it is really stupid. He like, likes Skyfall, and, Casino Royale. Does not like Sean Connery. Okay. Yeah, it's it's like fuck's sake, man. Like, you have okay. Casino Royale, I get why people were excited about it at the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that it seemed like it was very much of the moment with the sort of like everything was getting dark and gritty reboot. Right. And so it's like, oh, this is going to be this like peel away all the movie silly shit. And like, you he's know, becoming James Bond. That's the, the thing about that movie is like, he's not the James Bond we know of yet. He's getting there. Right. Yeah. Casino Royale. Like, he's, yeah. And like that's exciting. The way that Batman Begins was exciting. Yeah, and like the whole thing where like they, there's right. like a there's like a moment at Casino Royale where they ask him uh, if he wants his martini shaken or stirred. He says, "Does it look like I give a damn?" Uh, uh -huh. So like you know that's all fun. I get it. I do think it would have made a hell of a lot more sense and been a much better movie if they'd actually just uh, given it a historical setting, just just like just like set it in the time period of the original book yeah. because uh, they were trying to sort of awkwardly do this thing where it was a almost completely straight transposition of the plot of the original book to the setting where that plot made no fucking sense. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, so it's like, wait even with Mads Mikkelsen who rocks like, yeah, yeah. No, it, I so would, true. I so, would fucking love a sixties bond right now. I would be, so, or what is no, actually what are they set before this? Yeah. 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 Like the yeah, 50s, yeah. 50s, 50s, yeah, 50s, yeah. Like, yeah. like before, if they could 60s, set, I think, but if they said yeah. it before the first actual movie to come out, if they said it like, yeah, the 50s, no, if yeah. they did, if that they would be did, so like, exciting. Yeah, yeah. I know. Right. People would have been so into that. Right. I mean, yeah. this is the in the way that people got into mad men. Right. Exactly. Where, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Like yeah. a, as, like a scene of rail that was actually set in the sixties. That would have, 
that would have gone over great. And it would have made so much more sense that it's like what that like that because it like I could buy that he has to like play Baccarat to like beat this guy who's this like French communist like labor union leader who's gonna who's gonna like then funnel <laughs> the money to the Soviets. But like Thank you try you, to make it Al Qaeda, and it's like wait what. Right, right. Like, like, like who, who are these people? What is this setup? That's uh, it's like someone did a global search and replace in the script. I'll just put Al Qaeda in there. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and, you know, so, but like, but also, I know this is controversial, but it's like, I really like whatever you want to say about the pros and cons of Casino Royale. That thing is the fucking godfather compared to Skyfall. Uh, like, yeah, that yes. was such a dumb movie. Not. Like, Great, folks. Not great. It was like it's so bad. It was yeah. like so. I mean, even apart, like, look, I love James Bond movies. Uh, I actually this came up at the get together that Jason and I did last week uh, in conversation, and I actually said there that it's like you know, <laughs> obviously they're not reflections of my worldview, but they, uh, but like anybody who, um, you know, I, I sort of don't trust anybody who doesn't enjoy james bond movies uh on but, some yeah in some capacity or some level yeah there's yeah, yeah. some kind of like well it's pretty cool yeah yeah exactly <laughs> right because it is pretty cool come on um yeah. but like also and and i can accept that there's like certain kind i mean look there's very silly movies but like i could accept that like there's like a certain kind of absurdity along these lines that's like just kind of baked in but even by the standards of james bond movies uh, you met this woman for like 30 seconds and then you're just going to like step into her shower without her knowing you're coming and, and she's like good with right. it. I, I, you know, even for a James Bond movie, that's a little much. That's like right at the outset. Um, and then like, but like <laughs> overall, the no, first... I, that actually works, man. Okay. okay. Can, can I just say, I just, I just jumped on the letterbox for a second to remind myself of what I said about it. But I saw this incredible review, which is just two women don't like him and one even shot him, but they still giving him box thinking face, <laughs> <laughs> which is pretty great. Uh, I, I gotta say that's, yeah. that's uh... so, so like overall <laughs> though, the first like hour of that still movie, giving him box. What a phrase. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like the first hour, right up until they bring Hannibal Lecter back to London. Like I, right. I, I was like more or less enjoyed it. Uh, but then uh, they, they make this like huge deal about how Hannibal, I refuse to remember the actual character's name. I'm just going to keep calling him that. Uh, that has, uh, that like he's, that like he's got this whole incredibly elaborate scheme to get himself captured on purpose. Right, to, right. So he's going to go back to London. And there's this whole Rube Goldberg plot contraption, yeah. except that the last stage is that he's just going to like take some guys and walk in through the front fucking door of the building, yeah, like yeah. shooting. It's like, if that was the plan, you could have just bought a plane ticket. Like, why, why, why did you go through all Why did you go through all of that? <laughs> and then like the fact that the, uh, like the whole premise, right. That like, there was so much in that movie about how, you know, bond is like this, this, this relic of this, like this previous time in the history of the service. And he no longer fits into this new world. It's like, it's clearly supposed to be in continuity with Casino Royale, which was clearly set after nine 11. It was like Al Qaeda that, that like, like this is yeah. like what five years ago. Like, like how is it that you're like, have this whole setup about how he's this relic of this previous era who just can't fit, you know, into the world now. Like it was, so, it was so, it was so aggressively dumb. It's also just like come it's, on, it's broody Bond too. It, it, it's James Bond as Bruce Wayne, right? And, and yeah. sort of like we don't want to see that. We no. want to see James Bond be cool. James yeah. Bond is the coolest. Let him be cool. Let yeah, James so Bond be cool so again. So it's That's, like put it's it on a, a hat. It's incredibly <laughs> dumb, even by James Bond standards, and also it's not even fun. Yeah, right? exactly. It's, it's not at least fun. be fun. Is it sexist? Yes. Is it racist? Probably. Is it fun? Yes. I mean, like. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's sort of Sean Connery in a nutshell, like, isn't so it? So seriously, that's <laughs> yeah. like oh, no, Skyfall. That that was good. You know, that's like Goldfinger. Nah, right? Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Oh no, no, no. Thunderball, no, Rush with Love. No, 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 no. It's the you know, it's it's this like broody shit that like nobody is 
probably nobody's even watching already now in 2024 you know like the moment's probably passed nobody who didn't see it in the theater the song probably lives on the best yeah the song i am absolutely sure will survive the movie (laughs) is that the adele song yeah it's pretty good actually yeah Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. i don't even like it like adele's a great singer i don't like her her music and that's one of her better songs Let's let's see what other horrible takes we have on movies here completely different uh uh, e- e- all the different Bonds. I mean, they're supposed to be the same character, but they all have their different. They all have their different sort of characterizations. The original he gets James the man's playing, so he's almost in his like Sean Connery. James Bond is, is supposed to be almost a parody of what spy thrillers were supposed I, to be. I, I, I do kind and of. You did that for like several. I'm iterations. impressed he didn't. Roger Moore is though. obviously very parodic, and Pierce Brosnan is a little bit less parodic. And then you get to the hard gritty reboot, which is the thing I like, right? The hard gritty reboot with with Daniel Craig, I really love. I think again, Casino Royale is terrific. But I'm going to go no on James Bond, disappointing many people. Um, the Mission Impossible series. So my biggest problem with the Mission Impossible series is I actually like the original show. See, the original show, Mission Impossible, is much more about how the team combines to do a thing. And then in the very first Mission Impossible well, movie, every single person yeah. on the team dies except know. for Tom Cruise, like in the first five minutes of the film. <laughs> and so it becomes a Tom Cruise show. So, eh, I, I'm, again, it's lots of respect for Tom Cruise, but I, I don't I don't put it up there. But he is probably, we've talked about this, the only... He's the only romantic movie star. Action. He's the only action movie star, yes. I, I think there's just as good a case to put the Top Gun she couldn't even series here just because Captain Maverick is really good. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's true. She was like, he is the only, what's the term for it again? Right, right. Movie star? <laughs> it's railroaded. Yeah. Yeah. It's just with Mission Impossible. Um, John Wick. I like John Wick's one and two. As, as everyone knows, I did not like john wicks three and four again the the first one as a standalone film i really like and then it sort of starts world building i'm 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 warm on it but i'm kind of like warmer than than hot on it so it's better than john when it comes to rocky rocky one's a truly great film you could put creed in this as well yeah i i don't like the creed movies so um Mm. oh shocking very good all the rest of them mediocre (laughs) and then they get increasingly (laughs) silly okay i'm sorry can we can we can i'll make it quick but let let's yeah, I, 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 I really, I, I actually made a conscious decision just now. It's like, you know what? It's too cheap. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna say the obvious thing. Well, about why not? It. It's a good <laughs> fucking movie. The I didn't see. I only saw the original. The, the, you know, it's a pretty good movie. It's all good. Okay, so original Rocky masterpiece. Sure, uh, we agree with Ben there. We can agree there. Uh, how he originally ended the series was incredibly bad. By the way, I'm I'm surprised he didn't shout out Rocky three, four. Right? Uh, sorry, Rocky four. Because uh, what? Like, like to, it's, to be fair. To be fair, the the producer who actually has watched movies is about to, I think, make the same point that you are. Right. Oh, okay, okay. And by the way, I know what I said when I said Rocky three, Andy, because Mr. T. I love Rocky three. That's, that's, I do too. Do you think this theme. idiot does? I don't. I mean, oh. like, yeah, like it, it, it's he miss he fundamentally misunderstands what Rocky is, which a lot of people do, and a lot of yeah. you know it, it's fine. Sylvester Stallone misunderstands it. that franchise ended poorly until he came back with Rocky Balboa and redeemed it. We talked about this on our show. Um, yeah, but what a shocker! He doesn't like the Creed movies. Huh? Huh? Wow! Who could have believed that? Mm, well, mm. why is that? I wonder, I wonder. What's different about those movies that? Hmm. Uh, again, it gets it gets increasingly silly. So the, the whole point of Rocky One is that he is a bum. That's the entire point. He's too old and he's a bum. Right? And his entire triumph he's based on Chuck Wepner, okay, like the, the boxer Chuck Wepner from the from the sixties and seventies. The whole point is the fact that he even stays in the ring with Apollo is his triumph. And then by Rocky Two, they have him winning. Not real, okay. First of all, the entire point in Rocky One is also that Apollo doesn't take him seriously, and that's why he ends up fighting him basically to a draw. Let's just be clear about this. Carl Weathers versus Sylvester Stallone in a fight. Carl Weathers murders him. Carl Weathers played in the NFL. Okay, Carl, like, when you watch him flick a jab in Rocky One, there is no way, like Sylvester Stallone would be dead, like full on dead. So th- that's always been a problem for me. The, the kind of taking of the series to Rocky's like an actually amazing boxer. No, that's not the point. It's anyway. Okay, so that leaves you with Godfather and we can put Bourne here. Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. Okay. We'll get to more on this in just one second. All First, right, all right. what fuels the Daily Wire aside from our desire for justice? Black Rifle Coffee. Not only does Black <laughs> Rifle Coffee have ready-to-drink cans for people with no time to brew their coffee in the traditional way, yeah, their coffee too busy shooting guns. gives you the chance to purchase limited edition flavors. Black Rifle's coffee subscription gives you nothing but 
the best. Have it's you guys had this coffee? It's horrendous. Premium roast from the best farms it's worldwide. Every month, you'll get a new exotic roast shipped to your door, each with unique origin and a killer bag design with a matching sticker. Black Rifle Coffee is a veteran-founded coffee company operated by principled men and women who honor those who protect, defend, and support the country. With every purchase you make, they give back. So stop running out of coffee. Sign up for a coffee club subscription. Have Black Rifle Coffee delivered straight to your door on a schedule. Save money. Drink America's coffee. Go to BlackRifleCoffee.com. Use promo code Shapiro at checkout. Get 10% off your one-time purchase or Fuck first Duncan coffee club coffee. order. Again, that's Black Rifle Trash Coffee. Trash coffee. Don't do it, people. Crazy. Don't do so it. So I'm going to get rid of a few right off the top. So Pirates of the Caribbean, I'm going to get rid of right off the top. Bye. Bye, Twilight. Uh, yeah, Twilight's going to go. Eh, predictably. I'm going to knock off Narnia here. Yeah. That's surprising. Uh, and uh, Avatar. Yes. Yeah, a- Avatar has to... I mean, wow. I'll be honest with you. I only saw the first Avatar. Oh, wow. I have not seen the second Avatar. I, I didn't love the first Avatar. But James Cameron's oh. working on Avatar 2, 3, 4, 5. All oh, my God. Blue <laughs> Pocahontas, <laughs> a.k.a. Fern Gully, the last blue people. Oh, what a great uh, movie. Is, uh, yeah, not, not, not a fan. Not a fan. Okay, so that leaves you with Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, and LOTR. So I'm going to dump Harry Potter here. Okay. Uh, the my, my kids love the books. The, the movies are just not that great. <laughs> I mean, I remember watching them in the theater when they came out, and I was not a huge book fan. So forgive me. I'm <laughs> the only person in the world who's not like a huge Harry Potter, the books fan. I'm not sure I've ever read the entire series all the way through. Wow. In fact, I'm sure I've not read the entire series all the way through. You're going to have to do that for your kids. Yeah, I really do have to do that because my daughter loves them. My daughter loves them. I'm probably going to read them with my son so he can catch up with her. Um, and at that point, I'll have read them. But when the reliance is that the film is on the book, then really what you're a fan of is the books, not so much the film, right? Like, which is a I little different from LOTR, that. where I'll be honest with you, I've never read the entire LOTR trilogy. What? All the way through. But the movies are fan freaking fantastic. The movies are so good. And that's why Game of Thrones loses here. So Game of Thrones loses because Game of Thrones is the best meme of all time, right? The meme of the horse drawing. My, my favorite Game of Thrones meme. It's a, it's a meme of the horse that like seasons one, it shows like the back of the horse and it's super detailed. And then as you increase the seasons, by the time you get to season six, <laughs> it just is like a child's drawing of a horse. All right, I totally agree with that. That is the biggest problem actually. with Game of Thrones. <laughs> by the way, also the problem with uh, George R. R. Martin, who still has not finished the f***ing series. <laughs> what is wrong with George R. R. Martin? I mean, I know, it's, by the way, that dude has like the best opportunity to stick it to HBO ever, right? Uh-huh. He can just write a completely different ending where Bran does not end up winning, which is the stupidest ending of all time. Okay, so I'll, I'm still mad What's at it. What's the so. closest... To Lord of the Rings of that list. Game of Thrones. Game uh, of Thrones? Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. The first three seasons of Game of Thrones are phenomenal. And then it really just starts to... Once they run out of source material, it's cocaine decisions all around. His, so, uh, his fantasy opinions seem to be or better, actually. I, so I, 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 maybe we could end on a note of positivity for... Yeah, I, I, was I, was I think he's a big fan of the, of the fantasy genre. Yeah, yeah, man. yeah. Sounds like it. Uh, I've heard his political opinions, so I believe it. <laughs> <laughs> I also know, like, I I've got a question whether my man reads books because because he like if if you can't read Lord of the Rings, I mean, it's like the easiest read in the history of books, man. But, Come on, it's like it's like you make a big big deal about how you're this huge nerd. You you know you right. like. Uh, you clearly enjoy the genre. Like, if you, if you haven't read that, like, unless he was a guy that was like, "Oh, I don't read nonfiction." You know, like, okay, fine, dude. Like, I mean, like, I get it. <laughs> like, if if he was that, if he was the kind of guy that like did not read fantasy books, cool. But like, he clearly does, and like, you couldn't finish it. Yeah, it's like what what you just uh, do. You get bored. With it, yeah. Because like, like, give me too much description of the weather, because there is a lot of that in the books. <laughs> I guess, man. I, I, I don't know, man. That's not a good sign. There's uh, a lot to unpack there. That's all like, I'm gonna say. But I just, I don't disagree with this choice there. Crazily yeah, enough, yeah, I actually yeah. agree. No, the actual choices are fine. Like I, I pretty much, yeah. I think you know, I think I pretty much agree with you know with all that. Um, he didn't read fantasy books because he larped them. <laughs> <laughs> well done, well done. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean, right, I there's do, one more. There's one more to go, right? And then we, then I, we can hopefully. I, yeah, I, I do think, I do think that the, you know, like my, you know, my one actually controversial take here is I do think the Lord of the Rings movies are all too long. Like I, I've got uh, her words. You know, <laughs> I've never, uh, you know, 
like I've never been tempted to watch the extended cuts because I thought all the theatrical cuts could like stand to lose like half an hour each. They're they're better. I just finished rewatching all the uh the, the extended editions and it's like, oh, the, these work. These like there's no fat to cut. I yeah. like them. I'm the one constantly yelling for like uh, movies to be shorter, but I, 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 I yeah, like no, uh, you know, as yeah, yeah. I mean, that is a very strong prejudice of mine. I I generally feel like you know, I think uh, horror movies and old movies both get it right that like movies should be about ninety minutes long. Ninety minutes. Um, you know, if if you really have something to that you're like going for, I'll allow two hours. Anything over two and a half he needs an act of Congress. That Matt Reeves, the Batman. I mean, like, seriously, it's enough. Yeah. Like, I, I was like, you could have dropped 45 minutes of this and no one would have batted an eyelash. You know? Jesus. All right. Do we do we have the last part in us or are we going to? Uh, in for a penny, in for a pound. I see. Okay. Adventure. We just did these. So this will be interesting. <laughs> so there are a bunch of great series in the adventure category. I'm going to knock off a couple right away. So I, Ocean's Eleven is really not quite an adventure series. It's kind of a high series. I needed is, filler here. Yeah, I, I feel I feel like there was there's a little bit of filler here from from Zach. Um Mad Max, you know, eh. I I didn't even really like the reboot, the one with Charlize Theron. Like Fury Road, you're talking yeah, about? Yeah, Fury Road, I'm not I just didn't, one? didn't really enjoy it all. Oh, much. Yeah. Um, I don't like things that okay. rule. <laughs> I'm gonna knock off Jurassic Park here because the first movie is really good and then the rest of them are kind of meh. Oh, there. Okay, so that leaves you with indie Batman MCU. Uh so Raiders is one of the great films of all time. Raiders is just sure. awesome. And so is Last Crusade. Last Crusade is also Agreed. excellent. Yep. Two is terrible. Four is terrible. Hmm. As you know, I sort of enjoyed the last one. But does that measure up to like the accomplishment that is the MCU or Nolan's Batman? I'm going to go no. So that leaves you with Nolan versus MCU. You know where I'm going here. Nolan. Of course I'm going Nolan. Of course I'm going Nolan. You have to. I mean, there's just no choice. If they stay down the trajectory of Iron Man 1... Truly, the MCU would be like flawless. Yeah, I mean, so the, the the biggest problem I have with the MCU is just that I don't also, care about many of those movies. It's three films it. versus like, like thirty so, too. Like, but okay, yeah, whatever. Isn't that they did it? Yeah, right. Right. That's the accomplishment. Is that like it's big, but doesn't mean like every movie is great in that canon because it's not. As opposed to Batman, where every film is like amazing. You sure about that? Like basically, <laughs> until Dark Knight comes about, the single best superhero film is Batman Begins. And then Dark Knight happens, and it's just an amazing film. And then Dark Knight Rises happens, and you're like, I don't think that they would he would appreciate him using. I think you should leave. Uh, no, uh, I, yeah, I don't think he I, would appreciate that. You have been watching free public content from Give Them an Argument to access every single episode of the show, the main show on uh, Monday nights all of the streams, all of the uh, debate breakdowns, all of the patron-exclusive post games on Monday nights, all of the patron-exclusive bonus episodes every week, and much, much more, go to patreon.com slash Ben Burgess. I cannot resist ending this with, don't be foolish.